Greetings everyone, this is Gulab here, and today I'm beginning another series of videos now moving towards Western religion, the Abrahamic religions, and talking about dragons within those religions. We're going to begin with Yahweh. So this is Yahweh, the misunderstood dragon. This information coming from Draconic Chronicle. Chronicler, I'm sorry, Chronicler. And, and there, I'm going to go through this info and then also read one of the very interesting comments that's on this as well. So uh, the Western religions, the Christianity, Catholicism, Judaism, Islam, etc. basically take a lot of their stories from Vedic sources because the Vedas are much older <clears throat> So they just come up with all kinds of stories. And within the Bible and the Quran and all those literatures, there's so much made up fake stories that are just completely not true. But uh, we will go ahead and discuss some of these things because it just kind of shows where their mentality is. And it surely is upon dragons, that's for sure. Which is just further evidence that around the world, dragons and gods as dragons have been very, very prominent. And to ignore that for the Western culture, to ignore that it's in their own religion, is pretty funny to me. Okay, here we go. Since encountering him in his old stomping grounds of Mesopotamia, during my deployment to the Persian Gulf War, I have known and understood the so-called God that the majority of humanity only think they know. It has been said that something like two-thirds of the world population, or at least two billion people, worship the God of the Bible, variously known as Allah, Yahweh, or and Jehovah, or simply God. Despite the fact that the Bible is very clear on the subject. Very, very few of these people are aware that this entity is not exactly a god. A gold-hoarding, virgin-eating, winged, fire-spewing dragon, not unlike the dragons worshipped as gods in many other parts of the world. Considering how universal dragon gods are everywhere else, it should not be surprising that the biblical god is also one, and one need only read the Bible to find ample proof. In Psalms and Second Samuel, Yahweh is described spewing fire from his mouth, smoke from his nostrils, and possessing enormous wings. In Numbers, he is offered 32 Midianite virgins who are never heard from again, so we can assume they were eaten like all of the lambs, calves, and firstborn children that the Bible also states are food for Yahweh. <laughs> Many biblical scholars understand that the stories of Genesis originated in Mesopotamia, and if we go back to these writings much older than the Bible, we find that the God who made the Garden of Eden and warned the Sumerian Noah of the flood happens to be, as his hymns proclaim, the great dragon who stands in Eridu. And of course, what is the only idol that Yahweh specifically told the Hebrews to make and worship? It was a fiery flying serpent, otherwise known as a dragon. So is the Bible purporting that the creator of the universe is a giant, a virgin-eating flying lizard? No, it is purporting that Yahweh and 71 other dragons around the world were watchers who looked after specific human tribes and were all subservient to a true creator called El in the Bible, but known to most other cultures as well. Yahweh was the dragon god of the Hebrews and other Semitic peoples, just as the Aztecs had Quetzalcoatl, the Chinese had their dragons, the Aborigines had their rainbow serpent, and so on and so forth. Why are there dragon gods the world over. Perhaps the last time the true creator came here was a hundred million years ago when the dominant species were giant reptiles. 
Perhaps the best suited or most successful ones were flying pterosaurs and were enhanced by this creator to watch over the planet and ensure the survival of a truly sentient species, which would become modern man. Perhaps these gods are still seen today and are sea the sea serpents and lake monsters reported in their hundreds all over the world. And the reason we cannot catch them is because they are smarter than we are. Thomas Paine said, It is not a god, just and good, but a devil in the name of God that the Bible describes. There is a lot of wisdom in this for Yahweh does many terrible things in the Bible that are not befitting of an all-wise creator, but a devil is a silly thing, and if Thomas used the word dragon, then the Bible makes a lot more sense. But it would be wrong to paint Yahweh and the other dragon gods as genuinely evil. It is probably difficult maintaining the reputation as a just and beneficent beneficent god when you are a giant flesh-eating reptile but these were the best creatures the true creator had to work with in 100 million bc 100 million bc forbidden secrets suppressed for the centuries in the jewish christian and muslim religions will now be revealed I have studied this subject matter for years and now in the throes of completing the definitive biography of Yahweh the dragon, who by no fault of his own has been confused with and amalgamated with the original creator God of the Bible, El, who by other names is the creator in worldwide religions, often accompanied by dragon assistants. And now I will read the comment that follows this. Sorry for a too much, a very long comment, sir. Nice thought. And yes, their God, Yahweh, Jehovah, Allah, is really the true devil slash Satan, the evil imposter, God, Demurg, Demurg, Mara. Yahweh being a dragon is obvious, obviously and clearly true. Not his fallen angel, Lucifer, fake Satan. He's the true great dragon beast of Revelation, the true evil monster at in the end of the book, this Bible, book Bible, or even the Quran. They're identical to each other despite the different language and they're plagiarized, copied, stolen from the same origins. But still, there are some annoying religious person, monotheistic theists in the comments of other webs said that it's not just to defend their God are so blind not to realize that. Saying that the atheists or non-believers aren't wise as them, outright saying non-believers are stupid or deceived, deny to accept this thought and says like that they're so much more wise ones only, when in reality, no. In reality, it's them, the believers, sheeps themselves who are deceived and fooled by the tyrannical alien god Yahweh slash Allah, their god or religions from the beginning, totally mentally blind and deceived into worship and defend this true demonic god, mentally, spiritually, blindly worship it. <clears throat> Didn't they get it? that this is just a personal view of one and discussion, don't take it serious. Also, if according to the information of the mythology, Yahweh, Jehovah, Allah, Yahweh, a so-called most high God, the father of all monotheistic, Abrahamic, Judeo-Christian, Islamic religions, himself have based on the much more older ancient Sumerian Mesopotamian storm god king of war, the king of gods named Enlil. That's very interesting because um, that is like defining also what Lord Indra is defined as the storm god, the king of the king of gods, and um, god of war. That that's also described for Lord Indra. So, and Satan, or in this case, I should call Lucifer a god of sea and science wisdom, Enki. 
and their brothers, sons of Anu, the supreme sky god. Enlil is a younger brother of Enki, the older one, despite their divinity status as gods' deities. But sometimes in the some original versions of these stories, or some of the most original, earliest, oldest versions of stories like in the Bible itself and older ancient Mesopotamian Sumerian mythology texts, with the identical events like Garden of Eden, Fall of Man, Tower of Babel, Great Flood, Deluge, etc. They, both of them, are even called the Great Serpent Dragons, Enki, the great serpent dragon and lord of the earth, and Enlil, the another great serpent dragon and lord of heaven and earth. Since the Bible says Enki, Lucifer, Satan, is a serpent dragon, what about his brother, Jehovah, en, Enli, Enli, what's Enlik? I think that's a mistype. The first one's Enki, so shouldn't it be Enlil? Okay, did he, uh, did he, is a serpent dragon too? Yes, there's a few typos in this, obviously. He is a dragon too. In the very same Bible, it's implied like he, Yahweh, also actually seemingly sounds like a dragon as well. That both he and even his supposed son, Jesus Christ, in this case, the one that depicts in the book of Revelation, the Ragnarok-like end times event of Christianity sounds like dragons or serpents themselves, with some biblical or even including the Quran descriptions of his fiery breath, brimstone breath of God. Yahweh's breath is a brimstone or sulfurous fire that's so dangerous like a nuclear weapon, smoke coming from his nostrils, consuming people who displeases him, or consume people with fire flame like you posted <clears throat> eyes of fire, a flaming sword from their mouth, etc. Note 1, fire and brimstone, a Hebrew, uh, something there, ancient Greek, is an idiomatic expression referring to God's wrath, found in both the Hebrew Bible and the Christian New Testament. In the Bible, it often appears in reference to the fate of the unfaithful, brimstone, an archaic term synonymous with sulfur evokes the acrid odor of sulfur dioxide given off by lightning strikes. Lightning was understood as divine punishment by any ancient religions, or by many ancient religions. The association of sulfur with divine retribution is common in the Bible. The idiomatic English translation of fire and brimstone is found in the Christian King's Jane Version translation of the Hebrew Bible and was also later used in the 1917 translation of the Jewish Publication Society. The 1857 Leser translation of the Tanakh inconsistently uses both sulfur and brimstone to translate. The translation used by the 1985 new GPS is a sulfurous fire, while the 1978 Christian New International Version translation uses burning sulfur. Used as an adjective, fire and brimstone often refers to a style of Christian preach preaching that uses vivid descriptions of judgment and eternal damnation to encourage repentance, especially popular during historic periods of great awakening in their belief. In the Hebrew Bible, both use, uses the phrase fire and brimstone in the context of divine punishment. In Genesis 19, God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah with a rain of fire and brimstone. And in Deuteronomy 29, the Israelites are warned that the same punishment would fall upon them should they abandon their covenant with God. Elsewhere, divine judgments involve fire and sulfur are prophesied against Assyria, Isa 30, Edom, Isa 34, Gog, Ezekiel 38, and all the wicked, Psalm 11. The breath of fire in Isaiah 30, 33 is compared to brimstone. The breath of Yahweh like a stream of brimstone doth kindle it. So yes, Yahweh's breath is actually really a brimstone, a burning sulfur of or sulfurous fire, fiery breath, as you said, 
In Christianity, fire and brimstone frequently appear as agents of divine wrath throughout the Christian book of Revelation, culminating in chapters 19 through 21, where, wherein Satan and the ungodly are cast into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, Greek, uh, as an eternal punishment. And even in Islamic reference, still mention about it, the story of Prophet Lot, Lot finds mention in several Quranic passages, especially chapter 26, Ash Shuara 160 to 175, which reads, The people of Lut rejected the apostles. Behold, their brother Lut said to them, Will ye not fear God? I am to you an apostle worthy of all trust. So fear God and obey me. No reward do I ask for you of you for it my reward is only from the lord of the worlds of all the creatures in the world will ye approach males and leave those whom god has created for you to be your mates nay ye are a people transgressing all limits they said if thou dis desist not o oh, let thou wilt assuredly be cast out he said i do detest your doings O oh, my Lord, deliver me and my family from such things as they do. So we delivered him and his family, all except an old woman who lingered behind. But the rest we destroyed utterly. We rained down on them a shower of brimstone, and evil was the shower on those who were ab admonished. But he did not. Verily, in, in this is a sign, but most of them do not believe. And verily thy Lord is he, the exalted in might most merciful. So-called most high and merciful, I guess. Laugh out loud. Fire and brimstone in wiki info. And most of his powers and abilities are associating and relating with fire or fire-based powers like the rain of fire and brimstone more than using the lightning to strike people. And... The most importantly, Yahweh had once actually, at least at once time, been identified with the serpent god, Yahweh slash Allah being a dragon too, a serpent dragon god of war and storm, a reptilian alien god. There's also one picture that depicted Yahweh, Allah, Yahweh as a serpent, a bearded serpent dragon god that curls around the prophets. His head is at the lower right at the bottom of his column or pillar. And according to some conspiracy theories, which the Mesopotamian myths, including their deities, are also connecting with it fully, all the gods in the ancient times that ancient people worships are actually the aliens from another planet and even a, even in higher other dimension due to the depictions of them in the stories looks and seems like they're advanced high-tech extraterrestrial beings who came from the sky heaven with many different ultra-modern futuristic technologies which it's impossible to have such things since it is in the very ancient times eras far beyond human knowledge at that time it's much more like an advanced scientific technology from a totally different mysterious high-tech planet rather than a supernatural magic, if you want to consider in that way. Uh, let me pause right there and say that, well, this is, this is the flaw of modern history, because hi history, we're, we're not taught that advanced civilization existed in prehistoric times. We did not come from hunter and gatherers and apes and that sort of thing we we're not evolving we're devolving consciousness everything is diminishing lifespan is diminishing intelligence is diminishing good qualities is diminishing stature is diminishing people are getting shorter they're becoming shorter lived less intelligent so long 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 time ago people um, actually, we're very um, high tech. And that's why in the Vedas, it talks about, you know, 
flying aircrafts and all these kinds of things and even people can move from planet to planet even without an aircraft but um but yeah it talks about planes this is before the invention of planes all right let's continue now and and it's Yahweh himself who's also one of uh, one that said Anunnaki Elohim gods, the reptilian gods from the space. So yes, he's also a reptilian too. Yahweh is actually actually the another reptilian alien god, one of the race of reptilian-like, snake-like, or serpent-like, dragon-like alien gods, beings, entities that controlled this world. Yeah, so, and as we know, the other Eastern cultures already recognize the race of Nagas, the serpent race. And, you know, they've been existing, they've been in existence for, oh, since the beginning of creation. So um, the theory also referred both Enki and Enlil as the two reptilian, reptile-like, serpent-like, dragon-like god brothers. It is said that was written down in Sumerian text as the battle between Enki and Lucifer and Enlil and Yahweh, two reptilian brothers, two reptilian alien gods, two great serpent dragon gods. God was angry and filled with hatred for snakes and dragons, yet it's him, Abrahamic god Yahweh himself, who's also part of the said snakes and or great serpent dragons or reptiles, extraterrestrial reptilian alien race and also created Samel, the poison of God, the, the mixture of fallen angels, dragon and snake. What a boomerang bigot and hip, hypocrite he, he, this Abrahamic God Yahweh is. Note too, boomerang bigot hates members of a group race, even though he's also a member part of that said group race ironically hates people or being beings who are of the same race gender age group or whatever else as them feels hatred or contempt for and is so bigoted prejudiced toward a group of people or being that he actually belonged belonged to was angry and hate and filled with hatred for those beings serpents despite the fact that he's one of them too so much ironic and hypocritical and also it does feel fitted with that with what the gnostic lesser god demiroj yaldabaoth in his its true form looks like an and actually is a lion-headed or lion-faced winged gi giant great serpent dragon cosmic entity that created and secretly controlled ruled the whole material physical world universe of suffering also described as having a fiery nature and Archon with the face of a lion, half flame and half darkness, applying the words of Moses to him. The Lord our God is a burning and consuming fire. The reptilian appearance of the biblical God's God was a well-kept top secret, and only occasionally is it perceptible in the Old Testament as, for example, the obvious worship of the serap or brazen serpent in the incident during the Exodus. There are many more references, many of them explicit, in the mass of religious literature which forms the basis for the books of the Old Testament. The Gnostics, rivals to the early Christians, relate that as a result of eating the fruit, Adam and Eve achieved knowledge, part of which was to realize that their creatures were beastly forms. <laughs> The sad fact is that we have created God in our image and not the other way around. In this way, we have hidden the true identity of our creators so it might be possible to. Oh, goodness. This gets just even more and more juicy. So I'm going to continue on with this subject, but... Uh. If people only knew what they were worshiping in their Christian churches when they go to church. Anyhow, let's move to the next video. So thanks for listening and I'll be back soon.